Cairo, Seattle. This is COVID-19 Seattle. I'm Dave Ross. I'm Aaron Granillo. President Trump tells governors they call the shots on reopening their states. To make sure that we can make our decisions for what is best for Washington here in Washington. Governor Inslee responds, and we break down the president's recommendations for reopening the country. Back to work at Boeing. The company will start building commercial airplanes again next week after the virus shut down manufacturing. And how has coronavirus affected Washington's farmers and fishermen? The problem the ports have been dealing with this year has really been on the destination side of the supply chain. The Asian markets had been closed. The ports have been closed. More on whether Puget Sound ports are ready to handle upcoming shipments. Stay with us. President Trump says governors can reopen their states as early as May 1st, and he offered some guidelines to help them in their strategies. Governor Inslee today responded to those recommendations. The good thing about it, it is not binding, it is not an order, it is not a judgment. Uh, the president recognized finally, I think, that the rightful decision making is in the states and the governor's offices, both Republicans and Democrats. So the president laid out these guidelines his administration did titled Opening Up America Again. And it lays out a series of phases for how they could think about reopening. So the first phase, this would urge that existing measures remain in place while certain businesses could reopen if social distancing is possible. That, for example, might refer to uh, gyms. Mm -hmm. Then phase number two, this is for states with no evidence of a rebound in COVID-19. And if they have satisfied the criteria on the number of new cases, on hospitals, on testing, vulnerable individuals would still shelter in place and others would continue social distancing in public, non-essential travel, could resume in the second phase, schools could reopen, and uh, bars could operate with social distancing in place, and businesses would continue to encourage telework where they could and would close common areas where the staff may congregate. The third phase, and this is only for states that have shown no signs of a spike in cases after the restrictions have been lifted. So there, in other words, you try this, see what happens to the number of cases, then you try the next level, and then if you graduate from from you know the first grade and the second grade, you get passed on to the third grade, and that's where you can have public interactions, visits to nursing homes again, uh, bars and restaurants can uh, welcome in more people, uh, but they still encourage you to socially distance when possible, uh, don't spend a lot of time at large gatherings, uh, and employers could resume unrestricted staffing at the workplace. So that would bring us pretty much uh, back to normal. I don't notice in uh, in any of these uh, guidelines masks, mm-hmm. which is uh, I'm I'm curious about because it seems to me that that's easy to do, and it appears to uh, to help discourage the spread of the virus. And I imagine that uh, people will probably just do that on their own. Yeah. Do Do you know? Has it mentioned anything about widespread contract tracing as? as a requirement to reopen states? I haven't heard that uh, emphasized by the president. And I I think the problem is going to be the testing. At the the president's uh, briefing today, he talked again about the impressive numbers. We're testing more than anybody else. We're testing more than even South Korea, et cetera, et cetera. But even the number of tests he's talking about don't come close to covering everybody. Uh, I know that the governor in his briefing mentioned these brigades of, uh, of contact tracers who would, uh, if somebody self-reported that they, in fact, uh, tested positive for the virus, you would then go and try to trace all their contacts. That, it seems to me, would involve massive numbers of people. There are a number of apps that, uh, and and you've probably seen versions of these. I tried to download one. I I couldn't find it. It wasn't available yet, although it was mentioned in a news story. Anyway, these are apps which anonymously can tell you who you, or can keep a record, okay, without telling you who it is that you've been in contact with by using cell phone data, right? And then, should you test positive, you would report that, and then suddenly all these contacts, you would know who they were, but these people you contacted uh, or were near would get this alert on their phones, hey, you were in the vicinity of somebody who's tested positive so many days ago, uh, you might be wise to self-quarantine or get tested yourself. So... That may be something that is um, essentially up to you. But I think, Aaron, the bottom line is we're going to try this in phases. 
I mean, whoever chooses to, because the president has given up this idea of, of uh, one plan for the whole nation. Right. And then we'll watch the uh, hospitals. And if uh, large numbers of cases start showing up again, then I guess you uh, you end up uh, pulling back, which I think, I don't know how you feel, but I would be very, very discouraged to uh, to have it open up even a little and then uh, fail that stage and have to go back to isolation again. Yeah, I mean, think about being a business that's trying to plan for the long term here and think about them having to think about this accordion approach, right, where you open it up and then you have to close it back down. That's just not... That's not feasible if you're a small business, especially if you're a restaurant. You can't just keep opening and closing and throwing food away and then expecting to survive that way. It's just, I don't know. I mean, I feel like you have to have widespread testing and you have to have, uh, you have to have a lot more uh, in my mind to to reopen it in a better fashion than that. But, yeah. So uh, it tells me that there is actually a, a a market incentive to go above some of these guidelines. For example, I mean, I, I, in countries like South Korea, I believe they're doing temperature testing when you enter most buildings, certainly public buildings, and restaurants may want to do that. I mean, it it, uh, it seems intrusive. It's like a country where the TSA is everywhere, right? But um, it's probably a wise thing to do. And I, I think one of the things that restaurants are going to have to do, or any place whose business model depends on gatherings of people, is to make them feel safe enough when they come there. And uh, part of that would be to know that you're not sitting next to somebody who's running a fever. Boeing is bringing about 27,000 people back to work, resuming commercial airplane production at its Puget Sound area facilities. The company says it will use a phased-in approach starting on Monday. Boeing suspended operations last month after one of its workers in Everett died from the coronavirus. Boeing laid out a list of safety steps that it is taking that includes providing workers with protective gear and staggered shifts to promote social distancing. It will also offer voluntary temperature screenings at some locations, while employees who telecommute will continue to work from home. The Union for Aerospace Engineers, known as SPIA, says it hopes the safety precautions are sufficient, but its statement says, quote, experience tells us lapses will occur. Now, this move to reopen manufacturing does include workers going back to Renton, where Boeing hopes to restart the 737 MAX production lines, They've been shut down all year as the planes remain grounded worldwide following those two fatal crashes. We don't just distribute our apples and our salmon and our coffee amongst ourselves. We ship that Washington produce internationally. And Washington farmers are concerned about getting their crops to market right now. Our own Chris Sullivan has been covering this. Chris, are the ports able to handle these upcoming shipments? Yeah, it was. Uh, that, I got to sit in and uh, ask some questions of the head of the uh, the Seaport Alliance, uh, CEO John Wolf. Yesterday, he helps manage the alliance between the Port of Tacoma and the Port of Seattle. They kind of work in aggregate there. And the problem the ports have been dealing with this year has really been on the destination side of the supply chain. The Asian markets had been closed, the ports have been closed, and so it became very difficult to get products where they needed to go. The other issue is that ships that would normally come to Washington weren't sailing. There were 19 canceled sailings in March alone that were supposed to come into our ports, a 32 for the year. As of today, we anticipate an additional 19 canceled sailings as we look out into quarter two. This is a very fluid situation, and these numbers could change. And one thing I hadn't realized, Abe, in this is that when those ships don't arrive here with goods and containers, we then don't have the containers to go back the other way. It's like you're waiting on your connecting flight and it hasn't shown up. Uh, right. So you have nowhere to get where you need to go. And so that's why the shipments couldn't go. Container volumes dropped 22% in March, 15% for the year. Port of Seattle Commissioner Peter Steinbrook wants Washington shippers to know, though, that the ports are ready. We don't anticipate any stoppages here on our end, and we are welcoming with open arms the uh, seasonal flows that occur uh, agriculturally and ready to go and load those uh, containers up. And with the market slowly opening up overseas, CEO Wolf is hoping to see a normal flow at the ports by the second half of the year. I can't emphasize this enough. It is important that our local communities, our region, and our state have full confidence 
that our Northwest Seaport Alliance gateway will remain open and functioning operationally at a high level. I also asked Wolf about the workforce. You would think with fewer ships, fewer containers to handle, you would expect to see some jobs being impacted. Wolf says the union longshoremen that work the ports are, are hanging in there right now. The um, registered workforce has uh, found that even though we have had a downturn in volume, that they're able to pick up work uh, pretty much every day. It's the casual workforce, as they call it, the folks that are called in when the union needs more people that have faced lost hours and paychecks. So, so far, at least from the ports, it sounds promising, uh, with most of the people there believing that the slowdown they've been experiencing is turning around. So does that mean that the farmers are not going to have to scrap the apple crop or the cherry crop? Well, you st- that still is now more dependent on our social distancing rules and getting farmers up here, like we talked about yesterday, mm-hmm. than perhaps actually shipping their goods. I mean, still, with 19 more canceled sailings over Q2, the second quarter, you know, there are not going to be shipments going the other way either. So there could still be some hiccups there, but they believe they can handle it. Now the question is, will the farmers, like we talked about before, will they be able to actually harvest? Well, I mean, are they still looking? Are they actively looking for pickers? Is that the problem? Yeah, they're still looking. They're still work, looking for that. That migrant workforce still hasn't arrived. Uh, they're still waiting to get those, and because they, they haven't gotten guidance yet, still on how they can socially distance in housing, how they can socially distance in the field or in the packing facility. So I'm saying is if, if you haven't got the, the distancing rules in effect, uh, could you even use domestic volunteers to do this? Oh, yeah. Well, that's the other thing is that the, the, the folks from the Fruit Tree Association told me yesterday, they're like, yeah, we would love to have people, you know, if they want to have people come over, that would be great. However, it's not easy. That is not easy work. Right. Well, and I know that. And so... I'm sure they would be happy to see some out-of-work people, uh, you know, look, trying to come over and give it a go to try to pick up some paychecks. Uh, and we could try to find out more on what they you know, need to do to see what they can do to qualify or, or do that. But, yeah, there's a concern of getting the workforce into our fields. Chris Sullivan. Thanks, Chris. We will be back tomorrow and every day after with a 10-minute rundown of the daily local news. You can subscribe to this podcast. You can also find our news coverage on MyNorthwest.com or listen live at 97.3 FM.